activate your energy. Welcome to the Activated Authors Podcast, a show where we distill the core principles of what it takes to become a happy, healthy, and productive author, no matter what stage of the journey you're at. I'm your host, Daniel Wilcox. I'm an international best-selling author, as well as an author coach, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. But most importantly, I'm a lifelong student of all things productivity, psychology, and human behavior. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Without further ado, let's dive in. What is up, Activators? And welcome back to the Activated Authors podcast with myself, Daniel Wilcox, and the wonderful... Samantha Frost. Hello. Hello, Samantha Frost. How are you doing? Um, I'm... I'm... <laughs> it's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. I... I'm here. Hello. Hello. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a, a different episode to normal. We're not going to have a guest this week. And uh, I do want to just start by apologizing for uh, no episode last week. Um, the schedule's gotten away from us a bit. Life has gotten into the way. Much things has happened. Um, and we'll kind of have a little bit of an update on what's going on uh, with the podcast now and in the upcoming future, which the future is always upcoming, I guess, um, as this goes on. But We'll start off with all the usual tidbits and going in with all of the magic of the intro of the show. And I will ask, how are you, Sam? How's life? What are you working on? <laughs> um, I am really not well. Like, mm -hmm. I have been just very, very unwell. I was... Um, at a friend's house and I got like a really sharp pain um in my cervix sorry um spoiler spoiler alert Th this entire story is to do with my entire like vagina and uterus area so if that offends you you might want to skip um me talking so yeah I got a really sharp pain um in my cervix which then kind of turned into what I could only describe as contractions um and it got to the point where I was so unwell um my friend called 111 um who were essentially not useless but my god it was during um the weekend of like the extreme heat wave so they were incredibly busy and they said, um, we'll get back to you within, like we'll get a, a nurse to call you back within half an hour. And if we can't do that, we'll dispatch an ambulance. Half an hour came and went and we got a text message saying that uh, the ambulance would be with us between now and eight hours. Um, and so at two o'clock in the morning, the paramedic showed up um, and she was basically like, there's not a lot I can do because I can't, like I'm not licensed to go in there and see what's going in um but there what's is going in? what's going in um but there is a urgent uh medical treatment center thing around the corner from where my friend lives uh so she said either i can take you to a &E now which honestly i think will be useless because it's so busy because of the heat wave you're going to be waiting hours or you can like be at the center as soon as it opens in the morning. So we opted for the center because it was 2 a.m. I was in so much pain and I would rather be in that much pain in a bed where I can attempt to get comfortable than sitting on one of those plastic chairs in &E. So we went to the center in the morning. Sorry, this is a story. It's a saga that Frodo would be proud of. Um, and I was, told that my friend couldn't come in with me which isn't good for me because I like my anxiety is high normally let alone when I'm ill let alone when I'm in pain because generally speaking my pain tolerance is quite high um so when I am like in debilitating pain my anxiety goes through the roof because I'm like there must be something really wrong um and I also hate hospitals and medical centers I don't enjoy them turns out when I was three and I had my finger chopped off they ripped me away from my mom and sewed it back on and wouldn't let her in the room I only found that out recently but it makes sense that's why I don't like them um so my friend was basically thrust from the place I got taken through then told off by well 
the nurse that saw me told the paramedic off via me, even though the paramedic wasn't there. They were very annoyed that um, the paramedic hadn't taken me to A&E because he said they don't deal with abdominal issues. And I said, I said, it's not abdominal. It's I'm telling you, it's my cervix. I know what, it, like any person with a womb and who has a period knows what that pain feels like. It is, it's like telling it, it's like kicking a guy in the balls and then tell him, telling him he's got a headache. Mm -hmm. Like they're very different pains. You know what that pain is. Anyway, took me through, was waiting a while, took bloods and like a urine sample. Um, the doctor came in, told me, <laughs> first of all, the doctor stood right next to my bed and just kind of pressed himself against me, which was disgusting. And then he, after he heard me speak for about 10 seconds, told me that I had a UTI and I was like, no, I don't, this is not that. Um, and so he was like, okay, let me feel. And he was really gentle around all the areas that you would expect like to be inflamed or in pain if you have like a UTI or a kidney infection. And then just was savagely like needling around my uterus, womb, cervix, ovaries area. Um, and even though I was quite literally yelping um, he was like, yeah, it's a UTI, uh, left, wouldn't, would not hear me out at all. Um, then when it came back, um, said, yeah, we've dipped your urine, it's the UTI. And I just kept saying, no, it's not, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Gave me a prescription for antibiotics and unceremoniously booted me out. At which point I was, my friend had gone to, um, get the car. And so I was quite literally sat on the ground on one of the hottest days of the year. I think it was like 36 degrees. Um, uh, yeah, they picked me up and then eventually I managed to get to, I'm trying to think, oh yeah, then they brought me home. So I was supposed to get the train home, but they were like, absolutely not. You are not getting on the train like this. So they drove me all the way home, which was incredible um because like we don't live close and then I, I saw my doctor who I explained what had happened she did um a urine sample came back negative I didn't have a UTI which I knew um she examined me properly as in she actually did an internal exam because she believed me when I told her what was going on with my body and she couldn't find my coil which is um, for people that are unaware you can have a coil as a contraceptive method um she couldn't find it so she rang through to the hospital and got me seen um in a and e or like sent a letter so went to a and e god sorry this is going on for ages <sighs> went to a and e um handed in the letter, got taken through to like the triage nurse. At this point, I could barely walk. Like I was in so much pain and she asked the same questions, examined me. I was in there maybe two minutes um, before I was kneeling on the floor and leaning against the chair because I just, I couldn't stand. Um, so she took me straight through into A&E and like the actual, you know, place where you rest. Um, and as she's walking through, she just called to her colleague. She's like, I need morphine. Um, and my favorite part was her colleague was like, has it been prescribed? Which I was like, how many times do nurses try? Just, I just need some morphine. Just like on the slide. <laughs> um, thankfully on the hottest day of the year, because this was the actual hottest day of the year, um, I somehow managed to get a private room in A&E with air conditioning and an ensuite toilet, which I don't, didn't even know that was a thing. I was very grateful because I was in there for 12 hours. Um, I had so many different tests, so many blood tests, two more urine tests, both of which came back negative again, shocker. Um, scans, internal, just, it went on and there was like bungle after bungle after bungle. <laughs> they lost my notes for almost two hours, which meant that they couldn't give me painkillers. Um, so I was just writhing on the bed. Um, the person that was doing my internal scan just apparently forgot that they were looking for my coil um 
and had I not mentioned it after the scan, wouldn't have looked for it and had to go back in. So I had to have a second like scan and uh, internal scans are painful. They're not fun. Um, yeah, I just, it was horrendous. They couldn't figure out what it was, what was wrong, why I was still in so much pain. Um, they could not find my coil. I've had an X-ray. I've had two X-rays. I couldn't find it. Um, went back to my doctor a couple of days ago. Um, and she was like, okay, it's time to come at this thing with a sledgehammer. So she's prescribed me um, two courses of really strong ass antibiotics because she thinks what it is, is that I've had, um, she thinks my coil got slightly displaced. And then that's what caused my body to start contracting. So it was literally birthing my mm. coil. That's the theory because they can't, cannot find it in my body. Um, and then obviously that's caused a, a lesion which has somehow become infected so I've either got an infected cervix or womb either way it's incredibly painful um and now I'm taking some really strong antibiotics which are just absolutely ravaging me um but I am starting to feel a little bit better um but yeah like I can stand for about 10 minutes before I have to sit down for at least half an hour so I'm really not very well um mm -hmm. and that was only that was the short version <laughs> i'm sorry that i i was hoping that i could make that shorter than it was so no i mean you don't need to apologize for being ill and hurting and obviously telling the truth i mean the the, the uk medical system is pretty much close to a joke at the minute um like i've over the last year and a half two years been trying to get someone to actually look at the pain in my fingers and i've still got yeah. nowhere now, I phoned them again today, and the earliest appointment they have is the 30th of August. And for those listening to the podcast, today is the 1st of August as we record. So, like, yeah. nothing moves fast, nothing moves, moves at all unless you pay money, and the money you pay is extortionate. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's not good. But I'm really sorry that it's been awful for you, to be honest. Thank you. Yeah, it's... A lot. It, yeah, it's been very rough, um, to put it mildly. So... <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm doing, and I'm working <laughs> on uh, getting better. Segway. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just working on getting better. I've been doing a lot of sitting on the sofa mm -hmm. and cross stitching. Um, I've just I've put anything down that can be put down, mm -hmm. um, and I would just like to say a big thank you um, to you, Dan, and uh, and apologies to the listeners because it was because of all of this craziness going on. Um, that we kind of couldn't obviously record because I was just in incapacitated. Agony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you definitely don't need to apologize for it. I mean, we um so I kind of I mentioned at the the top end of this episode, like and mentioned a few a few weeks, a few months. I don't know what time is anymore. We're in August already. Um, but obviously this this podcast, so we started off weekly around uh February time and what we've discovered is that actually I think this podcast would be best moved to a seasonal podcast. Um, so ultimately we were looking at beginning to wind down. Like I was starting to work down towards the end of the interviews and things anyway. So it's not anything you need to apologize for, especially like being ill and being like that horrendously ill. Like it's something that, that can't be helped. And I think that like a lot of us take that. How am I trying to say it? A lot of us forget sometimes that when we are ill, when we are sick and when, you know, life forces us to stop, that we need to take that time and it isn't anything to apologize for like we can't help it like this this stuff's bound to happen that's what life is um and all we can do in those moments is, is be kind and try and like get ourselves better because we have to take care of priority numero uno to then look after everyone else and everything else around us so um i definitely i definitely like feel a lot of um the struggle in the sense that like i know that you're obviously like a single mum. um i'm a single dad and like I live very far away from like my family and friends and things. So like it's it's hard, especially those times when you are pulled to a stop because you have to carry on and it's yeah difficult. You have to do you have to do the the bare minimum with as much as you can, which sometimes isn't a lot. So um yeah. I will say that I kind of drag this a strong word. I invited Sam on to obviously talk right now because we're going to be winding down um this podcast as we move into seasonal it's seasonal times, but yeah, no, I appreciate you you sharing what happened of course i i would rather 
Well, number one, like, I, I'm, I'm a very good actor, but I'm a terrible liar. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my entire life people say to me how do we know you're telling the truth because you're an actor and I'm like because number one I'm not a psychopath um, and number two my emotions are way too close I like I play it as far away from the vest as humanly possible because I'm unable to play it close to the chest hmm. um, and yeah just I think I, I know for me like if I was listening to something and I enjoyed it and then it was kind of not there for and you, you know you wonder and I think you know it's good yeah. to be honest and I kind of feel a little bit like I owe people an explanation they're like oh you bring her on board and all of a sudden everything starts fucking up you owe no one nothing stupid bloody <laughs> northerner uterus. Oh, wow we went very different directions yes yeah, stupid <laughs> northerner and a stupid uterus <laughs> yeah yeah, no, as I say, like this, uh, so I I'm I am very excited about um actually I'll get to that in a minute. First I will update on <laughs> what I've been up to uh oh and gosh. what I'm working on. Yeah, sorry, um, hold on one second. <laughs> Slow down. What have you been up to? What have you been working on? I don't know. It's uh <laughs> so it's the summer holidays in the UK. Um I've had the kiddo, um, which dear God, like mm-hmm. I love him. I love him with all of my mm-hmm. heart you realize how yep. <laughs> yeah how difficult it is to be a single parent and to work um because i've managed to for the first time in a long time create space over the summer in which i'm not going to be working for a couple of weeks thanks proud to, of you thank you thanks to um wrapping up my ghostwriting and all that kind of stuff so i've got uh, a week or two with him in which it'll be untouched by obligation duty or any kind of work but this week has been full on full on parenting as well as um trying to keep on top of work and seven years old like I don't I don't imagine it gets any easier but seven years old is a lot of energy to contain um as I say I love him and like I really enjoy spending time with him like this week we we painted his bedroom which is a massive win for me because like over the last four years I've been like hopping from place to place since like me and his, his mum's bit um and it's always been rented places and we got to a point where like I found a house that I really liked and I got on really well with the landlady. This was the year of the pandemic, 2020. <laughs> and I said to the woman, because I got on well with her, I was like, number one, can I paint? And number two, can I get a dog? And she was like, unfortunately not, because the person who lived there before had a dog and the dog screwed up everything. She spent a lot of money redoing the house, so I can't do anything. And I was like, well, all right. So <laughs> that was kind of my marching orders. I gave myself to be like, I'm going to get a dog. I'm going to paint a room. I'm going to get my own house. Um and lo and behold, the, the journey in which I stayed with my parents and lived with them for a year, um, all through 2021, saved up, bought this place, and I painted his bedroom, and there's a dog behind me. So a massive F you to the landlady and to anyone who <laughs> rents houses to people. Because, like, it's so annoying. Like, I don't know the stats, but I know that there's a lot of um, rent boys and girls in the UK. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> no, I know there's a lot of people <laughs> who rent houses in the UK. I'm just I'll plow through the rent market is crazy <laughs> the rent market is oversaturated with so many like good people obviously there are some shoddy people out there. there are good people out there that rent houses and there's like you're not allowed to decorate or do anything to make your house your own and they're like these are people living in real situations who deserve to make a house their own oh. so like whether you're a rent boy whether you're a rent girl like I'm with you I'm behind you like I support <laughs> support your goals <laughs> <laughs> um oh. but yeah so that's that's been one of my big wins this week and then it's mostly just been you know plowing on with the ghostwriting i have what remains of forty-five thousand words to write um i have technically three weeks but i'm pushing to do it in two weeks to finish a book and then i am out of the ghostwriting game and so um as there always is with me there's a lot of stuff ticking behind the scenes um yeah I have discovered a few things about myself over the last couple of weeks, which I am excited about and I didn't realize was still there. So I've found a real hunger and a real yearning for more in-person things. Um, I think my experience with Chillicon back in May, and then um, I met up with the guys who I started the Other Stories podcast with, the Hawk and Cleaver guys. In that was in, I'm sorry, that was in May? I believe so. Yeah. I feel like quick. that was about four weeks ago. No, it's like three months ago. I feel like you're wrong. I feel like I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) 
time time oh i can't um but yeah i met with the holden cleaver guys and that was like awesome just like in-person planning plotting scheming like just meeting out with people so there's a lot of what i'm looking at to enhance real life stuff because i personally since the pandemic as i say i've been hopping from house to house i've been kind of like dealing with the ongoing um collateral from trying to like adjust to life to not being in a relationship uh with my son's mum and within that i feel like <laughs> pandemic has not helped uh, but so much of what i've done has turned digital to the point that it isn't fulfilling me as it once did um it's very easy when the pandemic's there to be like ah we'll just do it all on the computer but the world well england has opened up again and has for yeah. a while and i'm just i'm just hungry to to meet people to be in person to do things and so a lot of what will be coming including like a lot of self activated authors uh, with any luck is following that trend so yeah it's a little tease of of some stuff i've got going on um and yeah i've got <laughs> i got a book cover back this week for a project <laughs> that i'm very excited about that i'm not saying anything about quite yet it, um can i may i won't i won't give anything uh-huh, uh-huh. i have seen this book cover <laughs> <laughs> i have known of this book for a little while number one the title is incredible and I'm jealous of all the email correspondence that you've had with the cover designer because of the title oh, and number two the cover is incredible it's glorious it really is it, ah. it, it captures exactly um the style and the theme mm-hmm. of what what you wanted it to it's yeah <laughs> listeners you're in for a treat <laughs> uh-huh i'm very excited I'm very excited for it indeed um so that's coming there i've got um, another cover in the works for another project so yeah like a lot of just ghost writing um losing myself a little bit in the ghost writing while i also plan and plot and look at other things ahead but mm-hmm. yeah many many exciting things on the horizon um I, oh sorry yeah I was just going to say, just quickly touching on um, being a single parent and working. Yeah. Um, can I just say, like, so your little one is seven. Yes. Um, seven is a glorious age. Mm-hmm. It is also an incredibly challenging and difficult age, especially for um, little boys, because seven is when they get their first, like, huge injection of testosterone um and so it's it's around this age that that you start to notice a little bit of sass back Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's there's clapbacks going on there's a lot more testing of boundaries they have so much energy still though like they've still got the energy of like a four or five year old but they've got the attitude of a 16 year old yeah um and it yeah it's I take my hat off to you because I remember like you still have so many like moments glorious moments like you're still in the golden age here Mm -hmm. like I I, for me like five till like eight nine are like the golden years in sense in the sense of the kid has their own personality they can converse you can have all of that um back and forth so you still like you still got all that, but that doesn't mean that's not exhausting, because it is exhausting. Mm-hmm. Um, and you you mentioned like I'm sure it doesn't get any any easier. The thing is like, it, yes and no. So like, <laughs> mine is twelve next month, um, and he has been actually incredible since I've been ill. There's been a few moments here and there where, you know, he's being a teenager, which he started the change. Um, uh, I think he's probably been going through it for about nine months now. Um, So he really has, he really has the attitude and the anger and all that kind of stuff when he wants, not when he wants to, but you know what I mean? It it like flashes up. Um, But there's things that I can do. So like yours is seven. You can't just be like, I'm going to do the shopping. I'll yes. be back in an hour where I can do that. Or, you know, like he is self-sufficient enough to, 
to get on with a lot of different bits and pieces and while I am like resting or you know for example last night because I wasn't feeling very well he unplugged his tv from his room and carried it into mine plugged it in brought snacks up curled up in bed with me and cuddled me and li- literally fed me <laughs> a chicken and uh, mushroom bake while mine we all... sat next to me with a glass of milk on his tray and went can you pass my milk please oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah like don't get me wrong it is not all sunshine and rainbows over here but like it's it's the same as kids at any age like it gets easier in one sense and Mm. then harder in another yeah and we talk a lot in the um activated author community about parent parent guilt (laughs) and Mm -hmm. i was chatting to another author friend of mine yesterday who i'm becoming friends with and uh she was saying exactly the same thing like single parent six weeks holiday she was like i used to feel really guilty for just abusing childcare vouchers to send my kid away during summer but unless i don't I don't get any work done. Yeah. Unless I do, I don't get any work done. And there's and, a, and it's very quickly, because I'm aware that this isn't a parenting podcast, there's also <laughs> this like weird expectation on you as well to like do something credible every day. Like mm-hmm. um my my little one's um dad um has been like texting me just to say, like, what are you guys doing today? And I know they don't mean it in like a needling way but whenever I see that question I feel like oh no mm. I'm, I'm I'm letting I'm letting it down this is the summer it's supposed to be incredible and like what are we doing watching tv because yeah, I yeah. can't move <laughs> I my, my summers were pretty much just me I mean I was a bit older but me the only ones I remember are me going out with friends and mm. like just spending the day dawdling around like there was we we did the odd things here and there like we went to theme parks and stuff occasionally but apart from that nothing nothing grand like I think I don't know what that expectation is like I get it I totally yeah. get it like it's just something you have to take advantage of every single moment but yeah. like me and kid we went for golf we did some like real basic stuff we went for walks like we just we kind of had fun and for me that's that's what works um yeah. I love it yeah yeah <laughs> what's something you've enjoyed this week oh um I've enjoyed my son, honestly. Mm. He's been really cute and really sweet. Um, And we had a day where we just watched adventure films. Mm. Um, And we were sorting through Lego. Well, he was sorting through Lego and he asked me to help. So I'd get up every now and again and sit down for like 10 minutes and help him and then go sit back down. But like, he has so much Lego and he was looking for one particular piece, which is Darth Vader's um, helmet. Hmm. He had the the chin guard, but couldn't find the top. And we went through, oh my God, I don't know. Like he has, I, I cannot stress, like two massive like black sacks full of Lego and then two little boxes and an entire tub of characters. We went through every single piece and he found everything that he needed except that um, hood. So we was doing that while he was watching um, adventure films. And then I would sit down and rest or like so. Found my love of cross stitch again. Um, mm. And and because like he went through without complaint, anything like that, he, he would never used to have, have done that. But like it's just kind of a, a sign of like you know slowly uh maturing <laughs> and as a reward for it i have i bought him that piece off ebay it was like two quid um nice. so yeah i've enjoyed him and just like just spending some time away from everything except mm-hmm. like healing and my son that's what i've enjoyed nice. what about you what have you enjoyed this week i had my ears flamed <laughs> I, knew, I knew i knew i knew this was gonna be it we've already we've had a phone call about this i couldn't i couldn't tell you <laughs> he was so excited he called me to tell me he'd had his ears flamed <laughs> the first thing he said when we came online sorry i'm sorry for interrupting please tell the 
the gentle listener. This isn't actually my thing, but I thought I'd mention it because it blew my mind. So I I got my hair cut today and uh, this, again, without going into all the nitty gritty because it's it's quite dull. um, I moved here in November. I haven't yet been to a local hairdresser here. Like I'll get my hair cut by other means. It's not as mysterious as it sounds. It's just better than saying my mum occasionally cuts my hair. (laughs) So I was was gonna needle you until you you said that, but well Um, But now that I'm a big independent boy, I found a (laughs) barbershop locally. Um, I just went wondering if we can. (laughs) And I came across um, this this barber from Kazakhstan and popped in um, and was like, it was reasonably priced. He he seemed to do like a good job. So like there wasn't a big queue, which is good because there always is the one that I used to go to. Um, And (laughs) sat down, had my hair cut. And then uh, it was like, oh, Oh no! He was like, "Oh, do you want your hair washed?" And I was like, "Yeah, is it, is it included?" He was like, "Yes." All this for twelve quid. This will be mad. Like a haircut, my hair yeah. wash, like razor cut at the back, like with a proper old blade thing, and my ears flamed. And <laughs> so I didn't know this was a thing. He basically got a big rod that had it almost looked like a swab of some kind, and it was dipped in this weird gel. And he set it on fire, and I looked at it like, "What the frick are you about to do to me?" Like I, I value my eyeballs and every orifice. Um, and he. Literally was like, oh, I'm going to flame your ears. And before I said anything, he was just like, Whoa. and just like kept putting the flame near my ears. And apparently it's just to get rid of like the tiny hairs that you get on your ears, which I didn't know were a problem. But apparently I had hair on my ears and that was a bad thing. Um, so, <laughs> so for a couple of minutes, he just basically just <laughs> flapped fire at my ears <laughs> until all the hair was scorched. It was like normally when people have really hairy ears, you can smell it. And I was like, this is information I didn't know I needed today, but thank you for making my day. <laughs> yeah. So that's what ear flaming is. The thing that I've enjoyed, um, I've had a few things that I've enjoyed this week, actually. Um, uh, obviously, the bedroom painting is is huge. It looks like, I'm so really, good. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Um, yeah. The room's by no means done, but like it's all painted in the colours that he wants. So I've got to sort out more stuff on that. Um, and then I will say as well that uh, by your recommendation, I listened to Untamed by Glennon Doyle. That was a fantastic book. Um, mm-hmm. Recommend that to pretty much any artist um, because it's, it's just one of those books that validates that there is no formula to life. Yes. And no matter who you are and what you are, you can enjoy your life however it is. Yeah. Um, and I also, heart. I've been admittedly a little bit lost over the last few weeks uh, to the point that <laughs> Bless her. I, I, I work... recommended Untamed. You recommended Untamed. Um, <laughs> and one of the members of our community very, very kindly reached out and obviously sensed uh, something was up. Um, and something that I've come across, and Jen, like sometimes you, you read a book and it can either hit you or it can't. It depends on like, the time of your life. Yes. Um, so I got The Hob- the Obstacle is the Way by um, Ryan Holiday, Holiday. Um, a few months back. Started reading it, but I think I was just juggling too many books and I put it down. Now, I re picked it up recently because I'm determined to get through some of my TBR pile. And it's fantastic. And it, it hits exactly where I need it to hit right now. Um, stoicism as a um, oh movement, I guess. There's definitely a better word for it. Um, really resonates with me. And it's something that like I've kind of not unintentionally been studying for years just through other oh, things. Um, your creed. My creed. And so I've been reading that book and it's fantastic. And it's insightful and it's kind of really hit me at the perfect moment so I'm feeling a lot more uh, steady in myself and more um I guess in control of of what's to come and more just that combined with Glennon they're very very different approaches I was gonna say work that in tandem. yeah I was gonna say that there's such different like there is nothing stoic about Glennon Doyle no <laughs> like um, well maybe maybe because yes a lot of so stoicism a lot of that is you could almost and this is quite bluntly putting it, not exactly full, fully true, but you could say that stoicism basically is realism. It's understanding mm-hmm. the way of the world and not expecting it to be any way other than it is. Um, and a lot of Glennon's stuff is her moving in a path towards what she believed was right and then moving back to the way that things were for her and being yes. more true to herself. So yes. they, there's kind of a crossover, although Glennon comes from a much more emotional standpoint. Yeah. Whereas Ryan, like, I love him. I think he's amazing. I think C three PO. Yeah, a little bit. Like without the panic. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Um, yeah. <laughs> so no, he's but... Spock. Sorry, he's Spock. <laughs> so those are those are a few things that I've been uh, enjoyed this week. Um, a weekly win, which will be uh, 
No, it won't be. Our weekly win this week goes to Daisy, who finished Yay. at one of her first draft. So massive congrats, Daisy. I know that's like a huge achievement. Uh -huh. Did she? Two more acts to go. Oh my God, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That is genuine. That's, sorry, that's... I've been away from, um, for everyone that's like, you are a part of this community. I am, but I've been <laughs> away from everything because- I'm Why? Too, <laughs> too ill to function. <laughs> but that's incredible. Congratulations, yeah. Daisy. That makes me so super, super happy. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. That's, um, yeah, super proud of Daisy. That's keep on tracking. She's going to get to the end of that first draft, which is yeah. massive. Um, and that kind of brings me to the end of the usual stuff with your notes. So um, I guess really, at this point, I'll kind of explain what goes on from here and what our thinking is. Mm -hmm. So um, as mentioned a couple of times, we are going to be rounding down from the weekly format, which means that this will be the last, I'd say within the weekly, obviously there wasn't an episode last week, so that breaks it. Um, yeah. But I would say that this is the last of the weekly format, bar one interview that I've got upcoming that's already scheduled that'll be happening, um, which is one that I'm very, really looking forward to. It's with the yeah. um, incomparable Jay Thorne. So we're going to have a, a nice chat and that schedule is due to come in a couple of weeks. Um, so keep keep this podcast on your feed. Keep watching out for the podcasts. Um, and then, as we say, so the format is going to be changing to seasonal. Mm -hmm. Each season is going to have a theme. Each theme is going to have a number of outstanding guests. Um, and we're going to bring, bring it on very, very specifically to give you the right knowledge bundled up in a package that you can take and you can... Um, learn from and you know study from from some of the best in the business uh, i've got a few guests sort of ready to line up a few big names that i'm going to be hitting uh, some old friends of mine that i just think are perfect and apt for mm -hmm. um the things we're going to be talking about um and yeah so in terms of timeline they'll be coming in the next few months at the minute i'll be totally honest uh, i've been just consumed by ghostwriting um and so after ghostwriting is done i'm going to be sitting down and formally planning when this all comes out but i'm aiming for either the end of the year or very very early next year to get some of those up but we're not going anywhere so we are activatedauthors.com um we still have the community over there so by all means if you want to find us if you want to join us if you want to benefit more from like all the things that we do and we do a lot and we might as well take a bit of time now to indulge and say what some of those are um yeah, well, sure let's do it second. um but yeah you can join and you get 30 first days for free and there's no obligation. If you don't like it, you can quit. You can leave. That's fine. But you get access to all of the services. Um, but yeah, we have loads of stuff going on. I don't know. Shall I start or do you want to well, jump in? I was in? just going to, just on the 30 days free thing, because like I am um, on the lower end of the financial pole, <laughs> I know that for me, whenever like I'm interested in something and it offers like a free trial. I always feel really, really awkward about it um, because I'm like, if I don't like it, I'll feel pressured into staying. So I just wanted to say that like, you don't have to, like there's no kind of, it automatically starts charging you. There's, there's none of like, there's none of that. You, it's completely like free. Um, and yeah, like you will be welcomed with open arms. And a lot of our members, um, have had kind of times where they've had to duck out for a month or two for like whether it's personal reasons whether it's financial reasons whatever it is um, no one will judge you no one is going to like chase you with a stick you are very welcome um, to come and go as you please so when Dan says no obligation like he means it I just wanted to really underline that because I know that for a lot mm -hmm. of people it can feel awkward especially if like you go in and then you're like oh this isn't for me now I feel a bit weird yeah um so yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll i'll say just to like draw that point a bit further like it it doesn't benefit me if you're in there because you don't want to be or for no. any reason that you don't want to be like my my aim with activated authors is to create a community of passionate individuals who are activated who understand what the writing life is um we focus a lot on mindset we focus a lot on productivity we focus a lot just on general support in in life and all that we're doing we have a whole range of authors in there um, everything from cozy mystery to romance to historical to horror to dark fantasy to just like all over the shop so um really for me it's about building a home where authors can feel comfortable um we have people from all over the spectrum in the community which i'm incredibly proud of yes. um and and all over the globe as well and all over the globe absolutely yeah. um so yeah it, it is a case of I, I want it to be, to be the best community can be to serve the people inside it. So if it's not for you, I will probably tell you it's not for you um, in a kind way. I'm not just going to kick you out. <laughs> yes. But at the same time, one thing that uh, I know puts a lot of people off is that 
you know, it could be scary jumping into community, especially like we have live Zoom sprints, we have the, the Slack, we have kind of like a lot of different ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I make a point of when you jump in and you, you start your free trial, like I mean it when I say, if you want to jump on a call with me to feel more comfortable or yep. for me to allow you like an easier way in, that's mm -hmm. like huge for me because I get that that's nerve wracking. Yeah. And whenever we have a new person on calls, I do my best to make them feel at home. I make it so that, you know, you're not just in there and you're just kind of like assumed to catch up and just to know everything that's going on. Like I guide, I guide people in, in the best way that I can to make people feel comfortable. Yes, you um, do. You do um, everyone introduces themselves as well. So like- Much to their chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> Although, do you know what? It's very good because it gets you like, I, I can now like hone down mm -hmm. with like, you know, who I am, what I do. Um, moving on to sprints. Yeah. Because, like, for me personally, they are, like, the heart and the most, it's, I think it's what really sets us apart from other writing communities. Not that I'm saying you can, like, only, you can only be our friend. I don't really yeah. know that. Um, but, like, a lot of communities, um, writing communities particularly, uh, you find them on, like, Facebook, for example. And they're kind of, they're text-based communities in the sense of, you know, you interact on 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 the page sure. yeah that's yes. right mm -hmm. I'm tech wizard over here um but what really kind of makes us a strong knit, knitted group um is the fact that we see each other four times a week there are sprints um although I will underline the point that if like me or not like me you have debilitating anxiety and the idea of having your camera on or even your microphone on to begin with or for your duration is too much you absolutely don't have to like it's about making people comfortable and how the sprints work are we do 20 minutes of like focused work so there's a there will be a timer on the screen everyone mutes their microphones and then whatever it is that you are working on at, at that time you just put 20 minutes of like focused work on that and then we have breaks which are seven minutes long um in which we chat we catch up or you can go for a pee um <laughs> and what i will say as well is that those seven minutes um because we have like a couple of minutes at the beginning before we jump in then the seven minute breaks then we have like about 10 minutes at the end any questions you have about like anything um you know that's when we kind of ask questions and all that kind of stuff what i will say because i know that some people um worry about this kind of thing we're not the kind of writing community where like you're expected to read out what you've done there is none of that like you are welcome to like share if if you want to but that is certainly not our like raison d'etre that's not kind of how we massively do things you're allowed to share what you're doing if you want but it's more it's informal it's it's a group of all authors banding together to hold each other accountable to get words down as opposed to a critique. Uh, yeah, like there's no kind of thing where, you know, everyone goes round and reads out what they've done in that time. And then there's critiques and not, there's none of that. Um, mm -hmm. I just think that's important just in case anyone like wants that or doesn't want that. It's kind of yeah. important to know that's, that's not kind of how we operate. Absolutely. Sorry, I took over for a second there. Dan. No, all good, all good. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously you came from um, being a member of the community. Obviously you still are, but you help out a lot more um, in the sprints and things now. But like yeah. speaking from someone who's you know joined at that level and has experienced it, you know, from the other side, which I clearly haven't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they happen multiple times a week. We mm -hmm. have the Slack group, which is basically um, a big online forum in which we have different channels for different things we have like publishing marketing mindset we've got um meditation we've got vent and fury which is one of like it's it sounds popular. bad to say my favorite channel but like there's a lot <laughs> of like fun, there's a lot of venting in there where people just like vent their frustrations yeah um and so we, we've kind of built a structure so that you know whatever it is you want to find out whatever it is you want to talk about there's a place for it and it should be easy to find yep um on the also, connect sorry yeah. i was just wanting <laughs> I just wanted to on Slack just very, very quickly. Number one, just in case you have no idea what Slack is, because I didn't, um, it is, it's like a private social media channel um, or like a service. And when Dan says channels, what those are are like they're separate um, feeds with 
themed conversation. I'm sure most people listening will know this, but for the few that are technically challenged as I am, <laughs> I just thought I should point that out just in case they're like, what is Slack? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, perfect. Um, <laughs> if you're old enough to remember MSN Messenger, it's almost in that style, but better. Yes. <laughs> Much better. There's no nudge. Um, <laughs> we have our expert panels. So once a month, we've got uh, five dedicated authors who are part of activated authors who come mm -hmm. in uh in varying um combinations every month to talk on a particular subject so you can ask your questions you can get live answers from people like luke condor jeff adams chris kane helen scheurer and thomas fenton mm -hmm. um all their information is on the website but that's just a good chance to ask questions and to speak to people that you know getting it done um yeah. every single month and um, people you probably wouldn't have access to otherwise um and then i'm trying to think what else is there's, we there's, have monthly socials monthly so socials the last Friday of every month, we um, all come together and we just, we chill, we hang out, we have laughs, we talk, we drink. Um, drinking is not an essential part, yeah. but you know, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just another way to kind of make the community stronger. We share whatever it is that's going on with us. We play games. We've recently found out the joy of being able to kind of play games online together. Um, Quiplash, yeah. Cards Against Humanity, Among Us. Yeah, <laughs> so, like they're a lot of fun. Um, and much like the sprints, it's like obviously Activated Authors exists to help authors and creatives get the work done. But it's it's a lot more than that. People get to know each other like on a deep level um and i consider every single member like a friend um yeah so while obviously writing is at the heart of it in that sense mm -hmm. you do really just get an actual community of people that will like that have your back and the socials are a lot of fun yeah. um and they normally can get a little bit spicy because people are drinking uh, um but yeah. yeah yeah and then uh Two more main things that I can think of off the top of my head to include, well, there's, there's a bunch of them, it's all on the website. Um, coming very, very soon, the Activated Authors Dashboard, mm -hmm. which is essentially going to be a live library publishing resource that contains all of the information from my self-publishing blueprint, collaboration for authors, and uh, some other stuff that may or may not be in the works. Um, but it's essentially a, a live, up-to-date, quick-finding resource in which, if you've got any, uh, it's, it's how to describe it, it's almost like an online course meets a publishing library. So any yeah. question that you want answered, any confusion about writing, marketing, publishing, formatting, cover design, anything will be on there. All the latest resources, all the up-to-date things recommended from people in our community who actually use it and have tested things yep. will be on there. Um, and that's coming in the next couple of months or so. So you get all access to that. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, the so the yearly, the annual boot camps that I run, Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a member of Activated Authors, you get those included. So every November, you can join everyone else in the flap to get 50,000 words written in a month. <laughs> um, and I'm also looking at expanding that into uh, potentially May as well throughout the year as well. So oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Two lots of camps. So dedicated yeah. times to get your book done, get your words down um, and just work as a community. And I will say that that boot camp is, is super special because that's where all of this was born from. Um, managed to take a international statistic of... 15% of people who can complete the 50,000 word mm -hmm. in a month challenge and get that to 80% of our community. So people who genuinely believe they never could did oh, yeah. beyond expectation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, suffice to say, there's a lot of reasons to, to get involved. So all that's at activatedauthors.com. I have one more. <gasps> um, and I feel like I can say this, you probably can't. So... <laughs> You get access to Dan, and he's probably going to hate limited. <laughs> so, like, first of all, um, the person that like you hear or you see is the exact same person that is there. Like, I know from because I often will um, interview people after the boot camp or like after they've been in for a little bit with their consent, of course, um, just to see how they're finding it, what we could improve on, um, like. And if they're enjoying it to use as like testimonials to get more beautiful people involved and pretty much every single person without fail has said, like, I wasn't expecting Dan to be just Dan. Um, he like he joins in, he does the work 
and he's not not or never like selfish um with his knowledge so when i say if you have like any questions about publishing or writing or anything like that like dan really will help you um above and beyond to be honest probably to your detriment you might want to like cycle that <laughs> but yeah um like he's an international best-selling author he's incredible with mindset stuff and just understanding the plight of the being a writer the life of being a writer obviously he's also a single parent so he's got you covered on that um I mean if you are a parent yourself <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like you have access to Dan and honestly like without toting your horn too much no. I think that's kind of an invaluable resource thank you I'm also a Pisces um <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions and help people. That's kind of like the point um, mm -hmm. of the sprints. So that's why I have the breaks. Like I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. Like really behind a paywall. Like once you're in, you're in. Like there's yeah. no, there's no add-ons or tricks or anything like that. It's, it's there for taking. So, it's all yours. Um, but yeah, that's that's the activated horse community. As I say, the podcast itself. Um, oh, what I will say is uh, we are looking at starting the registration for November's um, writing camp. Yes, of course. So head on over to activatedhorse.com and all the information will be on there in one of the top tabs. Um, join the monthly zap if you want information and updates on all the things uh, upcoming so you don't miss out on any um, news, any upcoming programs, different things that we're running. And yeah, jump in for 30 days for free. Like, what are you waiting for? Yeah, we'd love to see you. Absolutely. Um, I think that rounds us off. So, so yeah. For now, we will say adieu. Uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks with the wonderful Jay Thorne. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll, we'll be back in the very, very near future with some top quality content. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say we were doing so well, but we have been a little bit all over the place. That's mostly my fault because I'm like, the painkillers kicked in about five minutes into this uh, yeah. podcast. <laughs> we don't but, Yes, we, we were. We were until that that accent. Yeah. Oh man, I tried. I tried so hard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as I say, find us on activatedoffice.com. Uh, otherwise, we will see you somewhere in the very near future. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Activate your energy. Thanks for listening to the Activated Authors Podcast. If you're ready to unlock your true potential and activate your author career, then head on over to www.activatedauthors.com to find out more.